Pecha Kucha has been around for over 20 years. In Kenya, it's been here since 2009. In fact, we've had several Pecha Kucha sessions here at the current village. So first of all, I want to say, I'm giving my vote of thanks now. Anushka, thank you so much for believing in us and trusting us to have this space. So thank you. Great, so we promised, and I, I'm running through this, we promised that we would be done by eight o'clock. Um, I'm giving you another promise, we'll be done earlier. Um, we will be done, it is now I think 6.30. First of all, I apologize, we're 30 minutes late. It is not, this is not us, we do not start 30 minutes late for anything, we're always on time. So I want to apologize that we've taken 30 minutes of your time 30 minutes that we would have had doing Pecha Kucha presentations. Um, am I forgiven? Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have a really great lineup. We have seasoned artists. We have artists who have crossed very many seas and live what are, what's called a nomadic lifestyle. I'm looking at uh, someone called Mr. Brutus, somewhere in the crowd. Um, we have resident artists at Karen Village uh, as part of the lineup. Um, we have animators. We have very interesting, very, um, for lack of a better word, dumbfounding work. Dumbfounding in a good way. Like, like oh my gosh, flabbergasting um, presentations. I had the privilege of going through some of them because I was un um, curating them. And ladies and gentlemen, you are in for some really, really inspiring work. Um, so let me just name, let me just tell you who's here and who's gonna give us presentations. And, and they'll introduce themselves. I, I, I cannot do justice introducing these amazing artists. So I'm gonna start with a person I know very personally for many years, Mwara Kungu. It's Mwara Kungu. Mwara, as you'll find out, is, an, is a professor of animation. She's, a, she's an artist. She makes the most amazing jam, and I will not say any more. She will tell you who she is and what it is she does. And then we have Donovan Brutus, all the way from the United States of America. <laughs> and then we have Andrew Mbaria. Andrew Mbaya, I just saw your presentation. I, I, I can't say what you do. You're, you're the one who's going to have to come here and say it because it was just so amazing. Um, and then we have Kelvin Shani, who's also an animator. We have Gerald Motondi, who is an internationally renowned sculptor. He, his, his, work, his work is displayed in New York. In Paris, am I right? Yes, in Paris, in galleries all over the world, he has work, he has some of his work gracing the United Nations building in New York. Um, we have Dalmas, oh, Aki Dalmas, I'm going to murder your name. Dalmas Omkadio, who's a picture framer. And then we have Joshua Bilaze Kato. Is Joshua here? Okay, Joshua is not here. And finally, we have Brian Omolo. So that's the lineup, but that's not, that's not exactly how you will go. So let me tell you how, who's going to go when, you know, first and the order of your presentation. So first, we're going to have Gerald Motondi. And then we're going to have Moira. So number one is Gerald. Number two... Um, Moira, number three, Andrew, number four, Donovan, five, Kelvin, six, Dalmas, seven, Joshua, and last but not least, Brian Omolo. So, um, so this is how we're going to do it. Um, I will be multitasking. I, I, my gender suggests that I am very capable of doing that. Um, I will be your MC. Uh, sorry, I forgot to introduce my co-organizer, Bawa Alambo, but in the end, she will give the vote of thanks. It is because of how we have Pechakuche in Nairobi. 
Yeah, so she's amazing. So I'm saving the best for last. So this is how we're going to do it. I am going to get off the stage and I'm going to set your presentation. Um, and then you just come here and do your thing. I will run it manually. Um, there's a timer. You know the rules. 20 seconds per slide. Um, and at the end of the slide, at the end of your presentation, we give you a standing ovation because you'll deserve it. Um, we've already collected your presentation, so we're going to upload it to the Pecha Kucha website. So here's what's amazing. Everything you're going to present today will be accessible to millions of millions of Pecha Kucha followers across the world, across 125 cities. So we're talking as far back as, as between all the cities between Peru, Peru, uh, between Lima, Peru, and San Francisco. So all that space in between, those are all the cities that are covered by Pecha Kucha. So that is where your work's going to go. Um, we will invite you to participate at the IPK at the International Pecha Kucha Day on February 20th, and that's a conversation we'll have separately. That is where you present your work live to the entire world online. So that's a conversation to be had. We shall, of course, update you via email. So with mu without much ado, I am now going to walk away and have Gerald Motondi come on stage, introduce himself as I set his presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Hamujambo Asanteni. As it has been mentioned, my name is Gerard Motondi. Uh, I'm an artist and art teacher. I'm an educator, having taught at all levels, light from... Uh, in uh, primary schools, high schools, university, teacher training college, and currently I'm teaching in West Pokot, some 450 kilometers from where we are. I just came in yesterday because I got the invitation, and having been part of Pecha Kucha, uh, Kenya, uh, when it was launched, I, I felt that uh, it's a good opportunity that I come and also share my latest works with my fellow artists and the world at large. Um, secondly, I would like to say that uh, I'm very proud to be in this space because I'm one of the people who participated in the launch of this particular space and I've also worked lately with Anushka when we had uh, the art symposium for the upcoming arts in Kenya. So briefly, that is who I am and I majorly work in painting and also stone having grown in uh, a traditional stone carving community in Western Kenya, that is in Kisi. Thank you so much for the brief introduction. Now, um, today's theme is my works. That is how I work. That's my work that uh, I was in South Korea, working in granite, one of the hardest stones. And I use uh, power tools, I use hand tools. We can move on. Now, this was my, one of my first works in China. That is in 2006. Uh, that is in China, Guangzhou, uh, in southern uh, China, one of the cities. And I did that one presenting a Kenyan athlete at the starting point, on your marks. Now that is in South Korea, uh, in Boryong, in a, a museum known as Mosan, uh, south of Seoul. So I did my first black granite uh, in that city, and it is placed in a water mass. On the other side is a restaurant, and that is talking about uh, a move that is surprising, a surprise move. Now that's me working in India. I worked in India in Bado, uh, Baroda, also working in black granite. And that is the work that I was starting using the power tools and also the hand tools. Now this is the process and there, on the other side is the finished work. Uh, that work is talking of manifestation of achievement. Actually you can see two people. The first one is the one who is doing the hand that have made it. The other one is a person who raising the hand, like when the footballers have scored. When you have achieved something, you feel, yes, there's that power. I call it manifestation of achievement. Uh, that is in the US, United States of America, in, in uh, a city, uh, in, in a place, uh, what, sorry, in um, one of the counties known as, uh, sorry, I've, I've New Hampshire, that's in New Hampshire, where I did that work. 
and I call it souls of peace in granite. And the mine from where I got that granite is where they got the granite to build the White House. So I was privileged to put that to the mother who is embracing a baby and the baby embracing a mother. Now that is uh, pink marble in China. Uh, and I was invited there. It was about 3.5 meters high. So I worked on that piece also, uh, which is talking about uh, the freedom of thought. That when people come together, each is having his own or her own thoughts, and they may end up getting united. That's why you see the eight sort of uh, knot at the center. Now, that is the, the finished pro, uh, piece that has been installed in a place Guang, called Wanghu uh, Sculpture Park. And the other one is when the process being done, almost finished. Now, that was my first uh, monument in Kenya at the English Point Marina in Mombasa. The stone was weighing 20 tons, black granite, mined in Machakos County and transported all the way to Mombasa. I worked for six months and then I installed it on a water feature at the English Point Marina. It's talking about African culture, the past, the present and the future. So you can see some traditional ligaria, some skin sort of, some guards. They are all presented in that particular piece of work. Now this is the piece of work. On the other side, His Excellency, the former president who just uh, uh, left, uh, he came and he was so much interested with his family, the first lady, and I'm trying to explain what is happening because he was so much interested in the artwork. Now the next one is a commission I was given at Rosin Academy, which is just behind uh, the U.S. Embassy. And I was working on a piece of granite in situ. I got the granite from uh, Machakos County uh, in a place called Indalani. Then I transport there. Then I was working each day involving pupils who could come and see on daily basis as it grew. So on the other side, I'm working on it. And this is the finished piece that has been installed, talking about family at prayer. There's a father, the mother, and the children all standing and embracing each other, making a prayer. Now, this is in Israel. I also was privileged to work in Galilee, using the Galilee stone in a symposium uh, that drew artists from different parts of the world. And I did represent Africa in that stone carving symposium, whereby I did that work which I called Down to Earth. You can see it's like a person who is very down, which means that it's a circle of life. You grow, you enjoy, and you go down. Now, there are two pieces. One is my latest piece in the United States of America in Nashua City, which I did in 2019. Uh, and the other one is the piece I did in South Korea in 2015, uh, which I call On Up. It's somebody who is carrying a bag of treasures that many times people do something and they say, it is not me. I'm not the person who did it. So we need to own up whatever actions, whatever things that we do. And the other one, sorry, uh, just a minute, or the other one is talking about uh, germination of a spirit that there is whatever we do is what is within us now this is how I transport my stones this is one of the stones for my latest project in Nairobi and it was 25 tons of granite this is now the start of that uh, working on that stone uh, as I displayed with the tools now I was working on it to convert it to dead and Kimadi so that's dead and Kimadi in granite the latest installation at the new Heroes Museum in Nairobi, at Huru Gardens. Now, this is the presentation of Kimadi. Uh, that is a, a close-up, and this is holding that posture. This is one of the rare photos that are not in public domain, but I got it from the museum. Uh, so this is what he choreographed himself, and he said it to the colonialist, telling him, here I am, so Utadu. Now, that was the message. Now, this is also another hero that I was working on. This is Mekatilili Wamenza, who also one, was one of the freedom fighters who rebelled against the colonialists. So the lady on this side, it's me working using some uh, power tools. The machine is the stone cutter. And on the other side is the finished uh, piece. Now, this is my latest installation at the headquarters of the African uh, Trade Bank, which is at Milimani. So I was commissioned, and it's a mother with a baby. I call it nurturing that all the institutions dealing with finances, nature, business, entities to grow and develop. Thank you so much. How amazing, how phenomenal is that? Imagine we have this talent amongst us. 
in this country. Something to think about. Okay, so up next, I think, was Mwara. My name is Mwara Kungu. I'm a digital artist, entrepreneur, and university lecturer living in Nairobi in the 21st century. I grew up in Odero, which is a peri-urban area west of Nairobi. I was ashamed of living in a rural area then. None of my classmates did. None of them walked home from school or sometimes had to fetch water or had to help their mums plant potatoes in the shamba, but now I'm proud of it. I grew up in Odero. I can live anywhere. It's the certificate of unborgable. And this is me playing with my siblings, with bubbles and with the, with the grass. I watched my mum printing these photos, getting them printed, sitting at tables, sticking them into albums. I had no idea what level of love I was seeing in action. And we played, but on Wednesday evenings, we would also rush home to watch TV in the days when KBC came on at 4 p.m. When Fat Albert finished its run in the US in 1985, it came to Kenya, and I loved it at first, but eventually I saw that these kids were Americans, even if they were black. That image with the steps going up to the door really irritates me, and this is Fat Albert's Christmas. How does it compare to ours? This is us in Deia, at my grandmother's place on Christmas Day. You know, we would get mutarakwa branches and break them and try and put decorations, but we didn't have the money for all those decorations, and why a fur? It had nothing to do with us. So then I finished school and I went to Kenyatta University. This is me in university. That's my first business, the university tuck shop. We learned a lot about business and that's one of my art displays at the end of term. So you can see I, I did real art once, yeah. Um, and when I was an when I was a young graduate deciding what to do with my life, I was doing cartoons for the East African. Um, and it occurred to me to remember and wondering what I wanted to do with my life. And it occurred to me to remember that I was annoyed that I was not there in the stories that the world told, so I decided to sort that out. I can't believe that's what I decided to do. What was I thinking? Why didn't I pick something like sensible, like, like biogas or, or feeding people. No, I decided to draw pictures and bring them to life. And when I went to the UK to do it, uh, age 30 caught up with me and I had a daughter and I had her in time that when my lecturer told me to draw a character, there she was, I said, stand still, and I drew a character. I wanted a story with a little African girl and there she was. So that, that, that's where my, the, the first sketch of Almasi came from. Um, I think, I think that's it. And she was in 3D. That's the very first iteration of my character. She was in 3D. I did it in soft image. My, my machine had 512 megabytes of memory. I could render 200 frames at a time, and it took three days to do each render. And I finished. I graduated. Um, I had a pilot, and in 2009, I showed it to Ashira Waruru. And he said, if you, he took one glance. He said, if you can produce it, I'll buy it and I'm still trying to meet the first part of that sentence. Um, so in 2010, I came home with two children and a big idea, and I tried to raise the money with my business plan to make those episodes. Um, I made a few peripheral items, like bedtime, bedtime stories, but I couldn't get anyone to, to, to build them, to, to buy them. So I decided to switch to 2D, and my friend Jirai Amanda made those characters for me, and in... 2017, I think, I set up a cartoon studio in my house. I got the machines. These are two of my students. And we, she's, she's in the spare room. He's in the sitting room. And they set out to make the first pilot. So I made the first pilot. And I took it to ZIF, Zif Zanzibar International Film Festival. And it didn't win the pitching competition because they said it wasn't good enough. Um, but it eventually, so I carried on. And um, I came back. I made a I, had a, I made merchandise so that people could buy it. I had a crowdfunding. I raised 214,000 bob. It cost a million bob to make one episode. Um, and that's like the cheapest animation in the world. Everywhere else it would cost $40,000. Um, anyway, 
eventually the university came on board. This was a very proud moment. Um, the university gave me a studio and I had uh, three years, I think I was able to pay people to re regularly work there. And eventually we had two episodes which I decided to just release to YouTube instead of trying to make 13 episodes and release it to TV. So we released them to YouTube on, the, on June and October in 2020. Uh, what else have I tried? Oh, I've got a Patreon page. I have got two dogged Patreon subscribers who keep giving me a few coins every month in the hope that one day this project will get finished. I have a whole page full of thousands of NFTs, Ethereum NFTs, and if somebody buys them one day, I'll have the money to make the project. But when I look at the, the, where I started, this was my home in Odero in, in 1981 when we moved there, and where we've got to today, I can really see the amount of humongous human effort that has gone into it. We have worked, my parents and I, and my friends and family have dreamed the dream with me. Um, and so there you are. You can watch two episodes of Almasi. Please get the kids in your life to like watch it over and over again to push up my viewing hours on YouTube. That's what you have to look for, the Almasi project. And mer merchandise is available on Facebook, uh, like these lovely t-shirts here. And yeah, that's me. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much, Moira. Um, so this is one of those times, six minutes, 40 seconds, doesn't do justice to, to you know, the kind of work that you do. All right, so coming on next was Andrew. <laughs> Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew, Andrew Afasha. Um, I'm an artist at Ueza Art Gallery. Ueza Artist Team Ogon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I've um, been doing art for two years now, uh, safe to say professionally, um, at Ueza. And um, my, my main, my main say style or focus on my artworks are trying to build up narratives that go that fo that focuses on on personal stories of astronauts in space rather than focusing on the space itself because it's um, it gets boring yeah so um, um, Andrew yes So on um, this first piece, I'd say it's my favorite. It's uh, you can see the title. So I, I it took it took a while coming up with this piece, but uh, I'm glad it got done. Um, as you can see from the title, it's sort of a distraction from the main um, idea behind the painting itself, because it's focusing on the lonely nature that the astronauts uh, experience. Yeah. And moving to the next slide, I intentionally put the orange cut, uh, as you can see. But it, uh, b the story behind this is from a book that i not yet done reading. It's called uh, The Killing of Commendatore. It's, it's a Japanese book. Um, uh, the next painting is a painting that I did with a, a friend of mine. It's, it, it, the story behind it is of two, two astronauts who went to Mars and found this beautiful garden of flowers and decided to take photos of it. And um, the next one is, uh, as, like I said, it's my focus is trying to build up stories. And as you can see, it's an astronaut trying to release fireflies into space, sort of like developing a culture while he's over there annually. You'll see another painting, a number two of it. And the next three slides is about uh, me, or the astronaut, going into Jupiter and experiencing these three weird seasons, whereby the first one is, uh, as, you, as you know, the Jupiter has like over 80 moons. So I'd, 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 
I think that uh, there are a lot of eclipses that goes on over there. And the next one is whereby it reaches a time where all color disappears and it just goes black and white for like a period of time, say three months, four months. And then, as I said, the second part two of the fireflies, see when the guy is releasing the fireflies into space, then suddenly colors come back. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, this was my first painting in 2022. Uh, it's called The View of You. I, it was sort of like a love letter. Say, I take someone to space, and regardless of all these beautiful views, the only view that captivates me is the view of you. Uh, there's no story behind this, really. As you can see, the title, it's... <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's, it's a, uh, say, uh, Amorabu in space, see the business, blah, blah, blah. It's a, yeah. So, no much story. And aside from doing space art, I sort of do some expressionism using, I, I use real, real pictures. I try to exp uh, experiment with infinity mirrors with this. I, I, I wanted to go wide, but I was scared. So as you can see, you can't really tell what's the real image. And this is um, a photo that I got. Uh, I loved the setting, so I, I just decided to do it. No much story behind it, really. But um, yeah, blinding lights. I, I think it was dancers dancing with blindfolds, yeah? And uh, with this, I, I did it intentionally, because I wanted to experiment with the, the blue, different blue uh, types of colors. And um, I, I wrote a side poem. Uh, I'm not really going to share because it's private. <laughs> uh, the other one is the darkness grasp is ephemeral. Uh, the story behind this is, uh, can I remember really? Yeah, I did it like two years ago. But as you can see, it's, it's like darkness engulfing the face, but with the gold and silver, it's like there's opportunities, really. Um, the next two slides are paintings that I did uh, with reference to my mom's image. Yeah? But the second one is more of her. This was a... Uh, uh, I manipulated it so it doesn't really look like her. So, yeah, that's my mom. Uh, she loved it. I lost my mom two weeks ago, but I'm glad she got to see it, really. She was so happy. Um, yeah. yeah. Not really sure. Either. Oh, yeah. Uh, on to the next sunflowers that float. Uh, I did two versions of this. It was um, also a story about an astronaut going to space and finding a place where sunflowers go grows from thin air. So as you can see, it's just the flower floating. This is the number two. Uh, I, I did it with um, some rare purple sunflowers. I actually Googled trying to get different <laughs> sunflower colors. So, um, and the, the next two slides are about, I, I didn't really know what season follows the other, spring, what, what, what. So I combined spring and autumn because I intentionally put the colors where, that are found in leaves of trees during these two seasons, the brown leaves, red leaves, whatnot. And um, like I say, trying to tell stories of, as you can see, you, you just see the astronaut is alone. There's no companion close by. And um, yeah. And this is the last slide. Uh, it's a painting. I did three, three it's like a collection of three. So it's called Yami. Uh, just experimenting with colors that look so sweet. And as you can see from her expression, yeah. Uh, 
um, my deepest sympathies and I guess on behalf of the crowd that's here, our deepest sympathies go out to you on the loss of your beloved mother. Um, and I can imagine how happy and satisfied you were that you got to see your work. Um, our deepest condolences. All right, up next from across very many seas, living a nomadic life. I quoted, you, you wrote that, I, it's not my words, yours. Um, Donovan Brutus. It was your first time, right? Yeah. All right, everyone. Hi, I'm Donovan, uh, Mambo. <laughs> hey, it works. So, um, let's see. Yeah, I'm, uh, my name's Donovan. I'm also an animator, so animators rolling deep tonight. That's pretty exciting. Um, I'm pretty much going to talk about how to, um, how to, how, or at least how I chose to like combine my purpose with my artwork. And uh, let's see, let me pull up my notes real quick. Also, I didn't get the note about how this isn't supposed to have any words in the uh, slide, so there's a lot of text. My bad. Uh, <laughs> let's see, let me find my notes real quick. All right. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So, um, hello, my name is Donovan. I'm, I'm going to talk about making art with purpose. I was born in Arkansas. I went to college in Florida, and, and most recently I've lived in San Francisco for the past six years, and currently live nomadically. Um, so for the next one, this is my demo reel. This is about 15 years of my favorite artwork that I sped up times four to fit this 20-second uh, stipulation. If you want to see the whole thing, you can, or at normal speed, you can go to my uh, website. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so these are some of my illustration pieces that are part of larger series. Um, I'm typically inspired by mindfulness, nature, and black excellence, among some other things. And uh, <clears throat> up next is the process. So I you know, take a picture, scan it into Illustrator, find the ge geometric forms that I really like, go through various color choices, and then I uh, add, you know, lighting and shading sort of stuff. All good. So these are some highlights of my career. Uh, as the next step, I want to focus on personal projects that align more with my purpose. So I applied to a whole bunch of art residencies. I also applied to be an astronaut, actually, <laughs> but why not? I was accepted into five residencies on four different continents, and this talk is coming to you live from the first one. How exciting. Um, so this is the kind of map of where I've been. Uh, so this led me to blow up my life three months ago by quitting my job, breaking my lease, and throwing all my belongings into storage. Uh, I took a train across the United States from San Francisco to LA, Houston, New Orleans, Washington DC, and to New York. And then I flew to Cairo, and now to Nairobi, and then hopefully some other places. So on finding purpose, how do you find your purpose? I think it's debatable whether or not we are here for a reason, but regardless of your beliefs, uh, I think discovering your purpose or creating one for yourself is really important. So I think this is one of the best uses of your time to Google this question, how to find your life purpose. Uh, once you do that, um, so I first kind of began this in 2010. That's when I began researching this topic and it really changed the trajectory of my entire life. Um, something that's important to understand is that your purpose will change slightly over time as you do. Um, Mine could change tomorrow, so you have to be flexible and really kind of gentle with yourself. So once you find something that speaks to your experience and your values, you have to tell everyone about it because you can't do very much by yourself. So I'm going to do that right now. My purpose is to use my words and my creative skills as an animator and illustrator to inspire others to positive action for social justice and the environment and for themselves. Um, then the next part, uh, as you push yourself to do more purposeful work, um, you have to really be comfortable taking rejection. These are rejection letters I've received over the past, or not over eight years or so. Uh, this isn't all of them, this is just the ones I happen to keep, and obviously most places don't even send you rejection letters. Um, when you do get rejected, you have to evaluate um, what you can improve and then decide whether that improvement is good for your personal path or not. So kind of now getting into some projects that aligned well, 
Embracing Our Differences was a, uh, it's an international competition that takes 40 artworks and poems and blows them up to billboard size uh, to celebrate diversity in all of its forms. These are my pieces from 2014, 2016, and 2021 uh, for that competition in Florida. Uh, next, there was Rasta Revolution. Uh, in the weeks following the deaths of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd, there's a swelling of uh, support for the Black Lives Matter movement, so I wanted to uh, do something that kind of examined the path to those support. Um, I later decided to animate the piece that you can see kind of on the, uh, on the left there. Next, my friend Mark, who is a better painter than I'll ever be, asked if I wanted to do a mural of that piece for Paint the Void. Uh, despite the fact I hadn't physically painted in like a decade, I said yes, and it was literally one of the hardest things I've ever done, um, creatively at least, and, but it was also one of the most rewarding. So next up, uh, I had, while I had this idea, uh, the moment I finished the first one, exactly a year later I did a Pride version for Pride Month uh, for, called Rouse Revolution 2 to speak to the diversity within the LGBTQ community and also the importance of being an ally. Um, I had no idea that there were so many identity flags, so there was a super educational process. Then, a year later, uh, my friend Jeff suggested I submit, it to this pro submit to a diversity contest with, in Florida to get my artwork on a bus, and I actually won. So apparently, this is crazy, only three people actually submitted to this contest. So sometimes you don't really have to be the best, you just have to put yourself out there and give it a shot. Uh, now into some of my animation work. Um, during my time at the California Academy of Sciences, my primary role was to help design, with the design and animation of Flipside Science, which is a series that taught youth about sustainability. It also taught me, a grown-ass man, about sustainability. Uh, the next up, there was uh, Planet Vision, which this similarly had a whole bunch of great tips on... Uh, <laughs> this similarly had a whole bunch of great tips on how to help the planet on micro and macro levels. Um, this was an entire effort. This is a huge effort for the entire museum. There was my animation, a physical kiosk, a website, and then tons of other educational materials. Um, more recently, during my time at ABC7 in San Francisco, I spoke with my boss about the work that I'd love to do, which led to me making a whole bunch of really powerful, cool animations. But two of my favorites were this Juneteenth one and one with a collaboration with National Geographic on how to teach uh, racism or how to talk to your kids about racism. Uh, perhaps the largest collaboration we did was with all eight ABC stations across the country um, called Our America. This was a Hulu series that I got to lead the anime, I got to do lead animation and designing for several of the videos that discuss injustices for people of color and for women. And uh, that's it, I'm done. So this is, uh, this is some of my contact info. And over here, these are some phrases that I searched to find uh, various competitions and festivals and that sort of thing. My most important tip is to put the deadlines on your calendar, otherwise you will not submit anything. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Donovan. So, we actually ambushed Donovan. That's a story for another day. He was here doing his own thing, and then Anushka said, oh, Donovan, you can do a presentation. So, thank you for doing this at very short notice. All right, so next up is Kelvin Shani. My name is Kelvin Shani. I am an animator, um, an illustrator, and I, I want to present some of my work that I've done. Um, it's kind of hard to come after some greats like um, the sculpture, Donovan, Moira, um, but I'm deeply honored to be here, and I hope that you will enjoy my work. Cool. <laughs> Right, so um, I have a joke. A priest, a nun, and um, a, a mechanic walk into a bar. It was painful. They should have just walked around it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You can't find it? All right. Um, yeah, she's found it. Cool. So, um, as I mentioned, my name is Kelvin Shani. I like doing work, uh, I like doing digital work mostly, and it's uh, mostly uh, via light and color. 
um, and also like doing stylized characters, um, but giving a twist to them. So maybe having some crazy lighting or some crazy colors. And I realized I like orange a lot. Uh, so these are two two characters. I call them guys, like just a random guy you meet on the on the nini, on the street. Um, and then I also get inspiration from um, events that have happened. So when I drew this piece, uh, my dad had just passed on, and I, I needed a way to kind of um, express it. I couldn't talk about it, I couldn't share it, so I was like, let me try and draw it. And I realized that when you actually um, draw from within, you people kind of connect with it, and it kind of creates this universal language that art has that you can actually reach out to people and guys feel like, oh, that, that really touched me. Um, this is another um, digital painting where it's just two guys talking. Uh, one thing that I try and do is I make sure that the drawing has like um, hidden, not hidden, like you can make your own um, assumptions out of it. So I, I keep it blank, like I, I leave it so that people can actually um, decipher things. Um, so this one is a background for an animation I did. So I used to watch a lot of Tom and Jerry as a kid and I loved the way the backgrounds look like. I was like, um, this looks like a painting, so it means someone has done it. So I made it like a personal mission to get into the um, field of animation and try and figure it out. Um, I also, when I was a kid, I loved, um, I didn't really like it. I used to pour over books, uh, textbooks, and you'd think I'm actually studying for the exam, but I'm just looking at the illustrations and wondering, oh, how good is this? And uh, it kind of inspired me to get in that field. I also um, very inspired by graffiti, um, uh, hip, -hop, uh, hip hop music and art. And when I, when I um, got to encounter this when I went to high school in um, Pumwani. There are these huge matatus that had all this um, amazing art. So I was like, I need to figure out how can I, I can depict that in art. Um, so this is another piece based on the matatu thing. There's a phrase um, some guys have come up with. It's called Matuana, which is matatu culture. And they have like a huge catalog of uh, matatus that I've taken photos of and just tried and keep a library of it. I also love comics. Um, my mom used to buy me this Bible comics because Marvel comics are too, uh, were too not so good for kids. So um, I loved looking at them. And another thing came up, I was like, okay, I need to do textbooks, I need to do cartoons, and also I need to do comics. And I think it's been a personal thing for me to just pursue that all across my career. So this is a comic we did with a friend of mine called Matthew Molo. He did the lines and then I did the colors and the lighting. I can take a breather as it goes. <laughs> all right. So, so after all this inspiration, I decided to call myself in for a meeting and ask myself, what can I do to kind of match all these things? Um, so I kind of set a path for learning. I said I want to learn uh, maybe perspective, I want to learn how to do comics, I want to learn how to draw cars. And it wasn't easy at first um, because it was quite um, overwhelming. So I, I, there's a, I think a blog post or a YouTube video I watched that said you just need to write it down and then put it like in point form that I'm going to do this, this, this and that. So in the next slide, um, oh, I think I deleted that slide. Um, so once you do that, you kind of um, figure out your balance, like what Donovan has said, whereby you, if you figure out, if you know your mission, you can be able to um, find a balance between your artwork and also your life. So he, this image depicts a balance between your social life, your money, um, your mental health, your love life, and your um, your health, just normal health and eating. So this is uh, one of my favorite pieces. It's a depiction of a Maasai um, connected with tech. I came across this term Maasai, Maasai on Instagram, on Twitter. So it was Ma and then Sci, Sci-Fi. So I thought of creating an image that depicts that. Um, so yeah, um, it's a cool Maasai lady with cool VR goggles. And then this image was um, an experiment I did or a learning process I did. So 
I wanted to do an image that shows very good sunlit uh, lighting and to put a, a, my own developed character in the scene. Um, so this was a depiction of it. So I went much further and this was a photograph I took of a, chi of a, a chick, <laughs> a girl. <laughs> A girl in a wedding function. I also do photography, so I took a picture of her. And then later on, when I was going through the photos, I was like, how can I um, depict which world she's in? Because she's in a crowd of people, but sh she seems like she's in her own world. So how can I depict that in an illustration? And then um, this one was a depiction of a guy who's shy, um, trying to talk to a chick. No, this is a chick, not a girl. Um, and then the guy is a bit um, refrained, that's why he's in the dark, but the chick is really ugly in this dude and wondering, can, can this thing work? Um, and then this is just a portrait, um, an African um, chick. I, I feel like there's not so much African digital art outside there, so I try to um, use my art to fill that repository. Um, so this is one of the pieces. It is a, a part of um, like a 30 image series of just African ladies. And then lastly, this is an album cover I did last month for a group, a musical group called um, Matata, Matata, not Matatu. And um, they wanted to depict like a rags to riches kind of a story for the album cover. So the idea was them sitting on top of this um, garbage chip and then there's a sun behind them showing that there's more light so you can reach me you can contact me or reach me on these numbers um, on instagram at sanari and thank you so much for your time your patience um wow that's all i have wow <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, just a little housekeeping. Please, let's have our phones on silent or vibrate. I know it's probably too late. Well, um, we're almost, we have three more presenters. Um, please make sure your phone is on silent. And then we have a younger audience at the back, whoever is with them. Um, could we have them maintain, reduce the decibels by a bit as we record? So whoever is with our younger audience at the back. All right. So next is Dalmas. Who's Dalmas? The organizers, fellow artists, Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Dalmas Omkadio. I'm a custom picture and art framer based here in Nairobi. I have a workshop here at uh, Karen Village. Uh, basically, I do framing. I use wood and paint as a form of, as a form of an art to protect and preserve the artwork. Uh, I started this job uh, some years back. Uh, until 2019, I developed some competency and uh, opened my own shop. And uh, since then, uh, <clears throat> I've done a, a lot of framing to many artists, photographers, and uh, including to some of the organizations like uh, <clears throat> Weather Art Gallery. And uh, I'm glad to say that I'm the... <clears throat> appointed framer for them. So basically, uh, that's who I am. Let's move to the next slide. So I've already introduced myself. That's my biography. Next slide. So uh, when you decide to do a frame, a framing for your artwork, basically the, uh, a frame serves two things. It's to, pres to preserve the artwork and present the artwork. That's basically the work of the frame. It's to present the artwork and preserve the artwork. So uh, those are some of the uh, two frames, uh, the two frames that I've done. And uh, from the look, it looks very nice. Uh, 
and uh, there are design principles that uh, have to capture like the the golden ratio and the so oh let's move to the so that's a video showing doing some work at uh, at gallery so you can play that video please Okay, okay, can move to next slide. So that's me uh, doing woodwork here at Karen Village at my workshop. So uh, inside the frame. So that artwork has been done by uh, Weza Art Gallery. So if you need the same, you can inquire with them. But uh, I'm the one who did the framing for them. So uh, in every frame, so there's a, a glazing, a mat, a bark, and a dust. And uh, each one serves its own purpose. Like a glazing, it, it protects the, the artwork from the dust. The mat holds the, the, the artwork, the bark as well, and uh, the dust covered so that the dust doesn't get to the artwork. Next slide. So I've already explained about that. A glazing, it, uh, bark. A glazing is a transparent sheet of glass or a click that is placed in the face of a picture frame. It, it uh, provides pro, uh, a protective cover for the artwork in the frame. So basically that's the work of the glazing, the glass in a frame. And that's the, now that's the, that's the mat now. And uh, it's a border that supports the artwork. And uh, <coughs> it can be trimmed into different sizes. You can have it into 0 0.5 inches, 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inch, based on uh, your preferences. And it comes in different uh, different colors. Uh, that's the back. Uh, it holds the artwork as well. Next, let's move to the next slide. Now, uh, the enemies of a framed art. So, uh, insects, things like insects, moisture, air pollution, light, and heat. These are some of the aspects that, uh, uh, that, that uh, causes harm to your frames. And, uh, and uh, I've outlined uh, on, uh, on the causes and the protection. Yeah? For instance, uh, uh, aspect like uh, heat and cold, what causes heat and cold. So if you put your frame uh, to, to a place that is very hot, so it makes your frame to, to warp. So, so, so the good things like uh, uh, if you decide to do a frame, Choose on a uh, on a good location where you can put it. Okay, so basically, so I've uh, outlined everything there. And uh, the framing tools, you have several framing tools. So you have a tape measure, you have hammer, and everything. But the most important tools that uh, you should have are your ten fingers. So in every project, after every project, make sure that you don't leave your ten fingers behind. Okay, <laughs> your ten fingers behind because those are the most expensive tools. Even if you can afford to get them, but uh, at a higher cost. And next one, oh, this one's very scary. So this is about safety in whatever you do. Yeah, in whatever you do, in woodwork, you should, you, should, you should be careful in whatever you do. Next slide. So the design basics. In my introduction, uh, I said about, uh, I used journey tools and design principles. So uh, one of the design principles that uh, comes in play is there golden ratio. So this golden ratio decide, uh, helps us to come up with the, the size of the, uh, the, the color of the, ma the mat and the size of the frame. For instance, in that, uh, in that frame, I've decided to use white mat. The reason being white tends to magnify the artwork. And then white, uh, uh, white doesn't color clash with the artwork. And then uh, the same, same aspect the, with the golden ratio, it the same thing, oh, sorry. Okay, let's move to the next uh, slide, the color perception. The color perception most, okay, if today you decide to go, if you go to any museum or to any gallery, you'll find that uh, most of the artwork has been framed with a white mount. The reason being, uh, okay, uh, the reason being, white doesn't color clash with the artworks, you see? So the, 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 the client wants you to concentrate on the artwork, not on the mount. So math mathematics. So this one uh, with the custom framing. So basically, what it means: you tell me what you want and how you want it, and then 
We go and then we decide on what is the best size of the mat, if you want it in one inch, in two inch, in three inch. So basically that's uh, uh, what it means. So types of frames, we have uh, three types of frames. We have uh, normal frames, just like that one seen. There is that one there. We have uh, a shadow box, that one you can use to frame the 3D, the object. And we have the floating. The, the photo looks like it's floating. Yeah? The artwork doesn't touch the glazing. That's the floating one. Uh, next. So those are some of the artworks that I've done to Weza with the, the that is flash. Uh, that's, uh, that's the canvas being framed. That is flash framing. And uh, we have used the, the white color. And uh, you can see how it looks. So it came out very appealing. Next. So that's the last uh, slide, and those are my contacts. So just in case you need a framing, so uh, you can take my contacts and then can do the business together. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dalmas. All right, so we have, oh gosh, I forgot who's next. So up next is Joshua, Joshua Bilaze Kato. Is Joshua here? Karibu Joshua. Hello everyone. My name is Joshua Bilaze. I'm a paper art artist. Then I like to recycle everything that I get, like paper, tins. My art is about to preserve the environment and to control anything around us. My art is consists of papers. One of them is here. This is my work, can't, everyone can see it. This is only paper and it's a vase. I recycle newspaper, you can see it. You can Some people always ask me if there's wire inside, there's not like wire, I just fold it, come with new design. All of those, are you ready? I'm a local artist, I don't have a workshop, always at home. Any design that come up, some client come with their ideas. Yeah, like this one, I have even the gold one. This one is the golden one. Every design is not for my idea, but client come and tell me, can you do this for me? Try this, everything's newspaper. Even that one is a client idea. I call it Arabian vase. This one was, it was supposed to be at all on the back. I couldn't finish it. I decided to be. It is to be oval. And someone will like it like that. <laughs> this one I call it a land drop. It's like land drops. And that one was another person idea. But I couldn't finish because it was too long and it was tiresome, so I left it there. This one was inspired by someone, it's a loved one, but I used ring. You fold the newspaper around, then you connect it. This one was another client idea. He said he wanted green and black, so the same idea. All of them is. This one was a mix of colors. All of them, you see they are different color. Those are the, how can we call it, the remain of those colors that I've been using. So I decided to join them, all of them. This one was another one, also the ring one. This one was, I wanted to use it at home, but I decided to, I gave someone, but this one was my idea. You see, those holes, they couldn't pass more light, so I had to cut some holes so you can pass more light. This one I call it rainbow. This one is from magazine, not newspaper. Magazine. Yeah, this one. This is where I used to live. This is my field. This one was a uh, lampshade. Yeah. This one was my, even this one is another one. This one also for, this, this one is for leftover. This one which I've made for some 
then I tried to use rough idea. That one was my inspiration from my mentor. He told me that if I can do this from magazine, it will be fine. Even this one from wastage. This one, it was buffed from, do not the star of David. Yeah. This one was the complex one. The other one, that idea, the same idea. This one was my first project. I used to water paint. You see the difference? The difference is determined by the base of the cardboard. If you have four corners, it will bring, it will, be, it will become a spiral. But if you have like six or ten, it will come with the main idea. This one is for, also it was mine in my house, another lampshade. I, I, I never thought, well, until today, so I came here and I seen all these sculptures around the room made of, um, and I was told it's not, it's not papier-mâché, eh? someone said, but I never thought, th the only artwork I did with newspaper is when I was 12 years old in art class and we were asked to make beads using newspaper and glue. That's the limit of my imagination <laughs> when it comes to paper art. Well, wow, seeing what you do, Joshua, is just amazing. All right, so last but not least is Brian Omolo. Uh, like you've been told, my name is Brian Omolo. I'm not this tall, it's a shoes. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really excited to be here. I saw the poster, next thing I did was send, uh, and they immediately told me I was in. So it just shows you how welcoming they are. Um, I'm an illustrator, I'm a digital artist, uh, sometimes I'm a graphic designer. Uh, when I'm not doing those things, I teach. Uh, I'm a Man United fan, I like eating chapos. Uh, <laughs> so at least it gives you a sense of who I am. Uh, today, I felt I wanted to give you guys a story of my journey, like how I came to discover the way in which I work and uh, the style in which I've, I create with and the different adventures and explorations along the way so thank you uh, so yeah so that's me that's a self-portrait I did from like now 12 years ago so it was a time when I was in second year of uni and everything just sort of started clicking yes yeah 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 so it was a time when everything just sort of I felt like things clicked and I had an idea now a bit of a clear idea of what I wanted to do and where I was going and the things that excited me and things like that. Uh, and I'll take you through the journey so that you see how there was a time when it wasn't always so clear. But I always did love art and my life of art started from cartoons. So I've loved hearing about someone liking Tom and Jerry. Uh, Club Kiboko, Saturday mornings. Loved watching cartoons. Um, used to pause them and draw them. So my parents saw that and made sure I went to schools that were big on creativity and stuff. And I just loved how you could create these worlds and people live inside them. Um, so when we went to art class, the first thing they trained us on was like fundamentals. Like you drew things, you used shading, different mediums. I didn't like wet medium, I liked dry medium more. So pencils, especially color pencils, sometimes pastels. Uh, so it was a good time I got the fundamentals in. But to be honest, I was a little bit bored of drawing. Like if you draw a real thing, someone else drawn a real thing. I was like, we just have real things. So I started venturing into abstract art and trying to just stretch the imagination that way. I had a really cool mentor called Charles who was a real rule breaker and just thought of the box and told me about people like Salvador Dali and surrealism and things like that. So I started to play around with my work. But my work still had like a division. Like there was the stuff I would make on the computer and then the stuff I would make by hand. And sometimes I would even feel like I don't even want to do computer stuff, I just want to do fine art. And I was still searching for a way for those two worlds to meet. Um, and then I saw this ad by an artist in the UK called Steve Wilson. He took part in this ad campaign and it really blew my mind. I didn't know that people can create art for advertising or for businesses or create, like, I didn't know that the hand-drawn and the computer, I didn't know those two things can go hand-in-hand hand together. So when I saw this, it really 
inspired me and I was inspired by it. And I didn't realize how much it inspired me until when I was graduating. And that's the style that I had. So I finally now saw that I can mix the hand-drawn stuff and the colors and my influence from like Maasai market and like the African culture that I grew up in. Uh, and it came together now in my work in a really cool way. Uh, so I did my first solo exhibition and uh, it did quite well and uh, ended up like in the newspaper. So it was just like, not sure of what I'm doing can work, but I knew I really loved it. So I trusted that if I feel comfortable in it, eventually it's just going to lead to the next and to the next. So uh, people started taking notice. I got my first big commission, so it was a big deal. Uh, a bit of imposter syndrome, I was like, am I really sure I can handle this? But it was a big deal that someone could trust me that much, uh, like a big project that meant a lot to them. And I really took it in stride. And it felt good that my style fit hand in hand with the, a solution that someone needed. So it started giving me more confidence to to go out there and even solve more problems, take on more projects. Uh, I started experimenting more with my work, trying to mix like the hand-drawn shading, overlaying colors on Photoshop. So still trying to find the thing that works best. And this body of work got nominated for the Latelier Art Competition, I think, back in 2015. So those are some small things that made me feel like I'm on the right track. I was still experimenting on now like dry media mixed with a bit of Photoshop, a bit of Illustrator and enjoying some of the experiments that are coming. Uh, of course, the others that weren't going so well, but I was having fun making them as well. So it was a nice part of the journey. Uh, and also seeing how sometimes you can just be playing around with ideas, and then later on, they, they gather a meaning. So sometimes when you're creating, you're just expressing yourself. And then later on, when you give them to people, people come up with their own stories. And I, re I learned a powerful thing. Sometimes the best thing is just to create. Other people will have their story. On your, art, on your art. But then came a time when I saw that you can be given problems to solve or stories to tell. Like this one was almost another kind of trying to show how uh, because of technology and the internet, like these communities that wouldn't have had access to certain markets, but now they will because of that free education or easy to access knowledge. Uh, and it got to a point where now I was starting to feel a bit confident about my style happy with the work that I was creating. There's always room to grow. Even now, I always feel like there's more things I can learn, there's more things I can improve in. But I was, there's a nice feeling when you're like, you know what, I'm going to be proud of how far it's come and just enjoy it as, as it's going. Uh, and started to also, along the journey, experiment creating work that can speak for, like, like what you said, injustices and, and social, social uh, change. And just try to tell stories that can create that kind of an impact. Uh, because when you create stuff for, when you want to create stuff for businesses, you also want to think about what, does, what do I want my work to accomplish. And then came now this, it started as an online challenge and experiment, but gave me an opportunity to sort of put my love for this city and the inspiration I get from this city into one piece. And I think it's probably been the most impactful piece in my career because it's won some awards, it's allowed me to uh, get other sort of opportunities and be welcome into other spaces to do the things I love to do. Uh, I got commissioned to create an artwork for a product, um, something which at the time just felt so surreal, like I didn't go out and like pitch for these opportunities, an email just landed and, uh, and you start seeing how there's some brands that are really cool, like they already kind of know what they want, so when they invite you in, it's almost like they've already done 60% of the work. Uh, and I got other opportunities to also do artworks for, this was for Nescafe. Uh, the topic was sustainable uh, farming and uh, just more opportunities to tell my stories or to tell stories for other people through my style and to ex keep, keep experimenting and seeing how far the limits can go. Um, and to a point where, like end of last year, I finally now started learning how to put motion into my work uh, and seeing how that will go. And this particular piece was talking about rehabilitation. Uh, so it was the same organization I'd worked with before, but this time trying to see what is the silver lining, what is that organization trying to do? They're working on human trafficking, so showing that rehabilitation. And now trying to carve out time, we all get busy and forget. Sometimes it's good to also do stuff for yourself. Uh, like we do stuff for clients, we do stuff for everyone else, but now I'm trying to carve out time. Uh, there's a series I've been working on. Uh, it's gotten to three so far. Hopefully it can get to like about 10 or more. Then I do a show next year. 
So I'll leave you with this quote. Uh, everything that we see around us called life was made by people who is no smarter than any of you. And you can inspire life, you can change things, you can also make your mark upon it. And when you learn that, you're never the same. Thank you. Wow. Let's give another round of applause for all our presenters tonight. Wasn't that, wasn't it worth the wait? Worth the glitches we've had? Worth the breakdowns? Doesn't this make up for everything that, you know, that 30 minutes, um, that 30 minutes of your time that we took, isn't this worth it? So um, I'm going to give, and I, I'm, I'm cognizant of what time it is, I'm going to give us 10 minutes for question and answer. Um, if anyone in the audience has a question for any of our artists, um, let's keep it short. Um, let's see. Um, so 10 minutes, we can do four or five questions, right? Any questions for the artists? Questions, comments, acknowledgments? Um, this is the time. Anyone? Yes, sir. How do we take uh, the creative energy that you displayed here yeah. forward? Oh, wow. <laughs> First of all, um, I guess when the, we're at the perfect location for that to happen. We're at the Karen village where artists are cu curated. This is where artists get recognized. So having institutions like Karen Village, for instance, is one way. The other way, I suppose, and by the way, I'm talking like a layman here, um, is to have government involved. Um, we've just ushered in, we're how many months old into a new government? Um, three months. Um, I am confident that the current, that the new CS for sports and culture, Ababu Namwamba, is a person I believe who's very um, progressive and open to um, other ways of, you know, encouraging um, the talent in this country. So, first of all, number one, and this is my very humble opinion, is having institutions like Karen Village, whose commitment to art and talent in this country is insurmountable. And then secondly and most important is to have um, support from your mother country, your government and um, you know, your, and the environment around you. This is as me and your Kavi Kimari who's not an artist who, who has a political mind um, but I think um, this is broadly speaking and when I have conversations with other people I imagine that's the same answer they could give. Perhaps, that's Nyokavi who is saying, we can have an artist answer that question as well. Anyone? Mr. Botondi, please, come forward. How do we take this forward? One is change of attitudes. If we change the attitude of our people, especially in Kenya, then I think we have a future. Secondly, Ashia said that support that we need, we need collaboration among ourselves. I'm so happy today talking about stones, but immensely excited when I'm seeing animation being displayed as a work of art. Many times people think that when you are an artist, you are a crazy person, and that maybe you are mad, and you, don't, you are not normal, but I want to believe that artists are the most organized people. That's my own take. So taking this forward, um, let's have a way of collaboration. And that's why I say this institution is very important. The youth and the education sector should look at a way of promoting art right from the young age and identifying the talent and skills. Thank you. Yes, Mara. Um, I'd, I'd just like to say something about practicality. Um, like, for instance, I, I really appreciate all, all, all the sockets, all the electrical sockets. I, I've been teaching at MMU for 10, 10, 11 years now, and I'm still on the electrical sockets. 
<laughs> it's just really we 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 need access to power to 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 get things to happen. So it's really helpful to have just really simple things like that going on. Yeah. Um I I don't know what would help me with with Almasi now. Um yeah, I'm I'm still going forward applying for financing no every way I can think of. Yeah. Um I I put episode 2 forward for um Kalasha this year and I got an email asking me for my KFCB certification for taste and decency. And um, I, I did apply for it. I, I paid for it. i am just still got to chase up. So something about having, having, having less, less hurdles to jump, that, that would be very helpful. I mean, I, I thought that was really pointless, a KFCB certification for taste and decency for children's animation. Um, but I did apply for it and pay for it, and it's really irritating that now I don't have it, and so I can't go forward for a Kenyan film and television festival. That's, that's just daft. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, 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 it's daft to put false barriers like that when I've spent like 3.8 million bob <laughs> getting this animation up and on the ground. And, you know, it's a 5,000 bob certification for idiocy. It feels daft, yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, Moira. Thank you, Ger um, Gerald. So I, I read when I, I read quite widely and I watch the news. And one of the things that really fascinates me is how in other countries, and we're not going to go far, we're going to go to Nigeria, for instance, where art is really big, where artists get incentivized by government to, you know, do their work. Here we have a very different mindset. And, um, um, for a long time, when I was in school, art and crafts was a compulsory subject in primary school. And then when you got to high school, then it became an elective. Um, in the last 15 years, art is not taught in primary school. It's, it's not on the curriculum. It's not examined. Yes, so correction, that's correct. When I was in primary school, it was an examinable subject. When I was in high school, I took art, but I didn't pursue it. It was an examinable subject. That's not the case anymore. The mindset now, and, and I understand it to some extent, is that as a developing country, our focus should be on TVET so that we go towards manufacturing and industrialization and so on. However, what they miss is the basis for all that to happen is humanities, is the arts, is, you know, a, a mindset that imagines those industries, right? And that's not being nurtured. I'm not going to talk politics. <laughs> this, this is not about what Nyokavi thinks. This is a night for our artists. Any other question? Or anyone who has, any of your, the artists here who have anything to say? Sure, Dana Fon. Yeah, sure. Oh, you want to ask a question? Yeah. Right. So, yeah, that's a really good question. Is there an artist? So, do you, you want to ask? Let me. I don't know if this is a, it's a handheld. I, I don't think some people heard that. Um, I did, but I'd like you to ask it. <laughs> I was just curious about, like, uh, since you know, you've done things all over the world, like, how do you go about applying for things? How do you find opportunities? All that sort of thing. Thank you so much. How do I get these opportunities or these uh, ways of getting out the world? One is the one opportunity with the change of attitude, it's multiplied. I was invited to China just to go and do a symposium in stone carving. While there, they discovered we were in a symposium of about 50 artists from different uh, countries, and they discovered that an African can carve stone using hand, and then combining with power tools, 
Then after I did my first work, then those other artists were amazed and they said, is it possible for you to come? Now that year, the following year I was invited back to China, then from China to Canada, then from Canada to the US, then from the US to India, then from India to Turkey, then from Turkey to Dubai. So every time you are being invited. Even now I have an invitation for Saudi Arabia and at the same time going to Iraq. But I'm now divided where to go because already I'm a teacher and I have to examine my students. So this is the challenge. But opportunities are there. What I say is that we need now to start with ourselves. That's why when I was here, I think it's the beginning of this year with Anushka, we had an, um, a Kenyan art symposium in all fields, both sculpture, painting, and all those. And then we're trying to bring up the talents and then create these opportunities by now marketing them out. Then we have this symposium everywhere in other countries. Then you have to register and belong to some of those organizations. When they have their affairs, they will put it on their wall and then you apply. If you apply and your design is selected, then you are invited. It's a good venture. Thank you. All right, um, we'll just take one more question. I had promised to finish by eight. Okay, we did finish the presentations before eight o'clock. Um, but um, I'm open to, we can have one more question. Um, and then after that, we'll have a group photo with the artists. Um, and then you are free to leave at your own pleasure. Um, I'm going to say in advance, thank you so much, first of all, to Karen Village. Oh, wait, first of all, Bawa, Bawa please come. <laughs> As Bawa is coming up, so Bawa is responsible for having Pechakucha in Nairobi. Um, Pechakucha, we've had Pechakucha since 2009, at least two or three Pechakuchas a year. Yes. We have some at, we, have, we do some at Alliance Francaise, yes, um, which are French, which are entirely in French. And then we have these, where we, we want to increase the frequency. So um, our plan is to have at least four a year. Um, and and I, I can pitch now for Karen Village. If Karen Village will let us have this space, um, we'd be very grateful for any time we have a Pechakucha. <laughs> So, so Bawa, please uh, introduce yourself. Oh, yes. So, I am Bawa Lambo, um, official organizer of Pecha Kucha in Nairobi, Kenya. So, um, uh, since 2009, we've been having really, really, really interesting stories. We've been hearing a lot of interesting stories, and today I've been so amazed, and uh, it, it, it's been wonderful, really, really. really. You... you, you the presenters, really, you've, you've touched me in ways you, you can't imagine, you know? We have recorded it, it's on live. Now we're going to see who's going to be taken in. You know, they take someone in, they, they'll choose one of you, um, the most interesting, you know, person or something, you know, and then uh, highlight you on their website, uh, on the website uh, in Tokyo. Thank you so much. And I don't, I don't have anything more to say. It's just that you've talked. Yeah, Talk. I'm, I'm, I'm the talkative person. Yes, <laughs> so, Bawa. So one of our co-organizers is not here with us. She's in um, France. Her name is Amina Abdallah. She's also a co-organizer. And I'd like to acknowledge Vanessa, who is at every Pecha Kucha we have, she gives of her time, and now she's pretending she's shy. Um, she gives of her time, her, her, I mean, she's just amazing. Um, she does the running around. Sometimes I feel Bawa may bully her, or I may bully her, but she's very gracious. Vanessa, thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you. All right, before we leave, um, let's just have a group photo. I don't know how the photographer is gonna do it. There's our photographer. Um, please, could you organize us?